Hey everyone, it's Jeremiah again. Uh, in this video, I'm going to be talking about defense um, and everything that's in there uh, sidearms, um, primary weapons, uh, muzzle loaders, axes, knives, archery, uh, cleaning kits, and I'm also going to be talking about ammo, the different types, and what they're used for. Alright, so I'm going to start with the uh, 1911 right here. This is American Tactical Imports. Um, people, some people out there will like to tell you that these things are junk. They're not as good as Colt, and that's incorrect. These are made to the exact specifications as Colt. They, the parts will interchange, and uh, uh, this is just as accurate. I took it out to a shooting range, and there was a guy out there that actually had a Colt 1911 and a Colt AR-15, and he said that his were better than mine. I proved him wrong. But then I also have military background, um, trained to how to shoot and everything. So I outshot him, so I wasn't really expecting much different. But they are just as accurate, so don't let anyone ever tell you any different. Alright, this is Tula Ammo. It is steel cased. Uh, people will also say that this stuff is junk and not worth it. I have fired hundreds and hundreds of rounds uh, through the 1911, through the 380 through the AK and through the AR and have not had a single problem no failure to feed no no failure to eject no failure to fire no jamming no nothing not a single problem oops and it is 230 grain ball ammo all right this is Winchester ammo I uh, bought it in a 100 round pack this is also 230 grain uh, full uh, full metal jacket ammo can be used for just about anything. You could use it for hunting. You could use it for personal defense. But that stuff, it can, it won't, it's not a guarantee, but it can travel through somebody, through the house and your wall, and outside, and probably even into a neighbor's house. This is personal defense ammo. This is, to, uh, hang on a second, let me look at the box here. This is 230 grain jacketed hollow point. It is um, Corbon plus P, uh, and it fires just fine out of this 1911. Um, the original or the book for it did not originally specify that it would shoot plus P, but everything I've looked at says it matches the same specs as as uh, Colt, so it will shoot 19 or it'll shoot uh, plus P ammo. All right, the next one is Walther PK380. Um, I hit center mass 50 yards on a, a human silhouette target with this. Uh, this barrel on this particular pistol is an inch longer than most 380s which makes it more accurate. A lot of people out there say these things are junk but if you really know anything about Walther, Walther is now made by Smith & Wesson, Springfield, Massachusetts. So the quality is definitely there. And if you, this is a polymer frame, and this is a nickel-covered or nickel-coated steel slide. If you take this thing apart and you look down into it, it looks identical to a Glock. Same pieces inside, same internal design, and there might be one slight difference because you know you have to do something at least a little different, or it's an exact copyright infringement, unless you have written express permission from you know Glock or whoever. But I've looked at Glocks, I've had mine apart with a Glock, looked at it exactly, it's exact match on the inside. So this is just as reliable as a Glock. People might out there say, no it's not. Yeah, it is. I would not trade this thing for a Glock. I particularly don't like Glocks. They, I don't like how they feel in the hand. I don't really like how they shoot. And Glock is made with pretty tight specifications, so if you get some dirt in there, I mean, in, in personal defense situations, it might not be a big problem. But if you're out in the woods, or if you're out actually in the woods and you get dirt in a Glock, that thing will jam up. And this, I'm not really worried about because it does jiggle a little bit. 
it's a little looser tolerances. It's it's more resembles like this 1911. All right, and of course ball ammo again. This is uh, Remington, like this green box right here. Underneath that, say Magtech. That is the hollow points that I have for the 380, and that's what I keep in it, carrying it all the time. All right, next this is a uh, American Tactical Imports. Um, no, not American Tactical. What is it? Uh, no, it's not American Tactical. I can't remember what it is. It's not on it, I don't think. Now, well, let's see. It says... Made by CN Rome Arm. Imported by CIA Georgia. I don't remember exactly what that means. Uh... But it is uh, it is the Romanian version of the uh, AK-47. Fires 7.62 by 39. Has a uh, uh, Dragunov stock. It is the short barrel uh, AK-47. Has the cleaning rod. And then all this pretty, fairly pretty wood furniture. Uh, it is pretty nice. There's the scope or, or the scope mount. I do have the scope rail for it um, but it's kind of useless I put it on there and then I put a, a cheap scope on there and I just I couldn't get it to uh, you know I, I had the scope down as far as it would go and it was still shooting high really high so I had to aim like four feet low and five feet right to get it to hit the target so I said screw it I'm not messing with it anymore uh, these are the Tapco polymer mags. I uh, got three of these and two of the steel ones, so I have five magazines. Uh, they are the 30 round. They are the standard capacity. 10, 15, 20 round. That's not standard. That's that's gun sissy, wussy fied bitches that just want us to not have, you know, big magazines standard capacity same thing with this one for the AR 30 round standard capacity all right now different ammo here uh, this is all uh, full metal jacket I don't have uh, or I have I have some soft points that I use for hunting but I didn't bring those out uh, this is just a small small number of what I actually have. I think I have like 600 rounds maybe. Um, 223. Uh, this box here of Winchester, this is soft point ammo, which I have right here. Use that for hunting. This is uh, hollow point, personal defense. Uh, when this hits, it opens up and does a lot more damage. This 20 is 223 opens up I believe to 0.31 so it comes open to like a 31 caliber bullet on impact and then this of course is standard full metal jacket and this is also American Eagle which is that one right there. Uh, this is the this is federal ammunition these two brown boxes here uh, but this is the this is what the military uses XM 193 cartridge that is the standard military ammo um, all right now this AR-15 this is an Olympic arms full length 20 inch I, I absolutely had I, I mean I paid nine hundred dollars for this rifle but it was worth it to me because it's the full length there's not a lot of difference between the m4 which is the 16 inch carbine and the 20 inch carbine or i'm sorry the 20 inch 
full-size rifle uh, as as when it comes to uh, accuracy there's not a lot of difference but with this particular rifle when you get out to distances beyond 450 yards the drop on the M4 is a lot more than this one this one is more accurate at longer ranges and that's anything beyond 400 anything 400 and er and, and closer you're not going to notice much of a difference but this rifle because of the cost of ammunition is not going to be my first choice because as they say in the you know the FBI says most uh, personal defense situations are going to be within within seven yards so at, at, at that short range do you want a small little bullet that you might have to put three or four into your target or do you want the 762 at shorter that's a 30 caliber round that's a man stopper that's why the 762 by 39 has lasted so long that's why AK 47s are still in use almost 60 years later actually no it would be 65 years later because that's what they were made for they were made to put people down the army when they came up with these this is not to kill people this is to injure and take them out of the battle that is to put them down if you've ever actually seen the difference between the two is huge 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 difference but now again it, it's it, I'm not getting into the whole what's better AK or AR because it just depends on what situation you're looking at if you're looking at range if you're looking at accuracy at that range then you want this one because this one's got the range the 223 will reach out and touch someone big time so distance range you want this accuracy here but if it's a short distance you know under a hundred yards you want that one because there's really no difference in accuracy at a hundred yards between a 762 and the 556 this one's got more a lot more stopping power than this one there's a lot more uh, there's more velocity here but not really that much these ones come out at 32 this one comes out around 28 so there's not really much difference in in velocity but this one's a heavier bullet it drops faster so this is where you want your range your 556 five, but within a close proximity you want the uh, the AK besides the AK is the carbine it's the smaller one it's the 16 inch barrel this one is 20 so you're not going to have a lot of range if you're moving through urban environments um, but you know that's a different scenario um, so okay um, I talked about the the firearms the the ammo different uses I'm not gonna get into the the like I said before I'm not gonna get into the whole which is better the AR or the AK because that's you know that's gonna be something that is gonna rage on forever but it just depends on the situation range you want the AR up close you want the AK because the AK has got more stopping power than the AR uh, but the AR will also work really well for hunting small animals I wouldn't hunt a squirrel or chipmunks or anything like that you'd destroy it with a 223 you want 22 long rifle for that but if you're taking down deer you can do it with a 223 or the 762 if you're taking down elk yeah you want something a little bit bigger so I'd probably stick with the 762 223 just might piss off an elk but I don't know I've actually seen people take down pretty large animals with a 223 so it's all in personal preference but I'm just getting more into personal defense against you know other humans uh, and what range you're shooting at alright so I covered that um, definitely cleaning you gotta have a cleaning kit CLP you know this uh, this is what we used in the army I don't think I could ever use anything else because I don't think anything else works as good as CLP uh, this stuff's expensive though this bottle cost me nine bucks at the gun shop so what I do is I go buy the aerosol can of CLP from Walmart and then I use the straw 
to put it in this bottle because this is not an aerosol bottle this is not a spray bottle this just has a little you know you open it up and you get your little fluid out of there there's still air in this bottle because I used the aerosol can to fill it up as you heard it went tsh. all right big ass coffee can probably wondering why it's full of shells it is full of steel cased Tula wolf whatever uh, it is all every single bit of it is 223 it's probably about I don't know several hundred shells in here uh, steel case can be uh, reloaded uh, they like to say that it cannot but it can uh, and all those are um, boxer primers so they can be changed using a regular press um, but they recommend not reload do not reload it more than once because steel does stretch a lot worse than brass uh, anyway okay on to the next part here uh, just try to clear a little bit of room off here so that I can bring up the next thing that I'm talking about this is a very small table I'm sorry if watching me move stuff around is a big inconvenience but I don't have a large table you know we don't actually have a like a well we have a dining table but it's it's folded up at the moment we don't use it we eat dinner right here on this table in front of the television just like every other American family I guess all right so we talked about the AR talked about the AK talked about my 1911 and the 380 so now and sorry again that I'm holding the camera if you can't already tell as it shakes all the time so I only have one arm to do this all right now this baby I'm sitting down right here this is a percussion muzzle loader it is a Hawken it is measured or uh, it's uh, modeled after the Hawken except for one difference the Hawken usually had a 26 inch barrel this one is full length 30 inch big long barrel this thing is almost five feet long huge huge rifle uh, it is 50 caliber it is made by traditions and it is a 1 in 66 twist which means it will fire the lead ball it will fire the mini ball and it will also fire any of the uh, jacketed bullets with the sabots that you can buy at, at uh, Walmart Dunham's uh, Gander Mountain you know whatever Cabela's you know the little the little muzzleloader bullets those will also work in this rifle uh, I do not have anything for this yet I don't have any tools for it I don't have any of the wads the balls I don't have any of that stuff but I am because I'm thinking about getting into the whole reloading stuff that's why I kept all those uh, cases in there the, the shells in there not shells uh, uh, steel case ammo can't really call it brass because it ain't brass uh, but I don't have any of this, anything for this yet I don't even know if it works because uh, I bought it for 60 bucks at a pawn shop he was going to just throw it away um, so I don't even know if this thing is safe to fire um, what I'm going to do is when I do have the, uh, or when I am actually able to take it out and fire it what I'm going to do is I'm just going to build me a little rig to put the uh, rifle on and tie some string to the trigger and stand back a little ways and let it go just to see what it does if it fires fine and there's no malfunction then I'll start using it but I want to get like because I'm gonna get the bullet press for that stuff but I want to get the little uh, uh, the little die the, they look like pliers um, and there's a lot of places in town here that are um, tire shops and stuff like that um, so I'm going to go get some of their lead wheel weights and then I'm going to buy some antimony on the internet to mix it with. It's a, it's a, a 9 to 1 ratio, 9 parts lead, 1 part antimony. Antimony makes it hard case lead, uh, which leaves less 
lead fouling in the barrel. Uh, the thing about muzzle loaders, though, they have to be cleaned every single time you shoot them. Uh, every single time. Uh, if not, that stuff gunks up in there. It's hard to reload. Uh, it can actually cause problems with firing later on. So you, you, every time you shoot this thing, you have to clean it. Uh, I would even go in as far as cleaning the nipple out, because everything else, you know, you, you got to clean it all out. You know, there was rust inside this barrel. It didn't look like bad rust, but I cleaned most of it out. I actually put CLR. Uh, which is calcium lime and rust. It's the stuff you can buy pretty much anywhere. Let it soak overnight. Scrub the barrel out. I got most of the rust out. I oiled it up to keep it from re-rusting. So it's in good shape for now. Until I can find out whether it'll shoot. But uh, in, in a really bad situation, ammo might end up becoming scarce or non-existent. Uh, other than what's already out there. So... Finding lead is not going to be hard, and all you got to do is melt it down over a fire, put it in the in the, the mold, and boom, you've got ammo. Yeah, it might be single shot, but if any really bad situation happens and it ends up where there's a year, two years, you know, we're 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 without rule of law and without an economy, you know, by then a lot of the cased ammo might be gone. It may have been all shot up or someone's just hoarding the hell out of it. So if you've got access to lead anywhere, wheel weights, uh, fishing weights, uh, you can even dig lead out of the ground. If you know, if you're an alchemist and you know how to do all that stuff, because I don't think lead is completely 100% pure when it's in the ground. I think there's other stuff you have to do to it. But if you're an alchemist or you know anything about that, then you know you can you can do all that fancy stuff to get it where you want. So, all right, but muzzle loaders can be probably one of the most handy things to have out in that type of situation because the ammo would be easy to find for it. All you'd have to really do is stock up black powder, and if you're a reloader, you are probably got some black powder stored around. And if you know how to make it in nature, you could probably do that too. Um, you need like saltpeter and sulfur and charcoal. And that's all you need to make black powder. Um, just don't use that information to get yourself in trouble. I just told you how to make black powder. Now it's up to you to be responsible with it. Don't say, oh, I learned how to make it from this guy. Because there's all kinds of YouTube videos that tell you how to make black powder. So that information is not illegal. It's what you do with it that can make it illegal. All right, moving on. Archery, bow and arrow. This is a Browning. Um, I didn't even know Browning made bows and arrows until just recently, because I've only had this thing for a couple months. Um, again, this is something you got to practice with a lot. I have the last time I shot a, a bow and arrow, I was a child, and uh, I was not very good at it then. Probably no different now. Uh, there's nothing special to these. These tips on these arrows are practice tips. But they would still work if you actually absolutely had to use them. Uh, these are the carbon arrows. I uh, bought these from Walmart for like four bucks a piece or something like that. Uh, back in this little hole there. All right. Um, I do know some specifics on this uh, bow. It is a 70 pound draw. It is 285 feet per second. Um, it has elevation adjustment. It has a crosshair sight and whatever that little I don't know exactly what you call that thing, but it kind of resembles that funky string ball that were popular back when I was a kid. And there are two of them on this thing. Uh, then, of course, I'm guessing I'm guessing that's a range adjustment. I'm not 100% certain on that. I don't really know much about this. I need to get out and practice with it and learn how to use it really well and become efficient with it. Because in a situation where you're, you know, you're, you're about to get raided by a person... 
and you know they're in a search party and you want to take him out without making a lot of noise a gun would be the worst decision you could ever make if you've got something like this or even slingshots you get those professional quality grade you know the really good grade uh, slingshots you know they'll they'll drive a, a glass marble eight inches deep into ballistic material so you could probably even take a person out with that so you want a way of taking or dealing with people quietly and an art uh, and a, um, a bow and arrow would be perfect for that all right next axes now that's the only one I have in here with me my other ones in the car it's a Coleman it's a camp axe it's garbage I hate this I hate it I hate it I hate it of course if I got it uh, sharpened it would probably do a little bit better but this bought this at Walmart for 20 bucks it's a SOG uh, standard operating gear I guess is what it stands for uh, at least that's kind of a military term for it this is technically a tomahawk it's a throwing hatchet um, but it works really well on wood even if it's a big log you can cut through it in no time with this thing um, but it is also a defense weapon you know for thousands of years humanity uses ax or used axes to kill each other so this will work for that too and if you get good at throwing it you might be pretty deadly with it or you might just use it as a camp axe which is pretty much what I'm going to use it for and that was a little case that came with it um, my cousin has a a SOG uh, hat or a, a tomahawk pretty similar to this one he got it on the internet paid 50 bucks for it so he's going to be pretty upset when I show him this one which I mean there's there's a little bit of difference between his and mine but overall the head is the same uh, same shape even got the same two little holes in there so there's really no difference between this one and his and this one was thirty dollars cheaper um, all right next one we'll talk about knives and of course I'm gonna start out here with the big boys now knives are going to be pretty useful you know cutting things maybe even defending yourself cut you know processing game that kind of stuff now these these are more of for like defense because they're so freaking huge um, uh, kukri is what they're actually called it is a kukri knife these things originated in the Middle East and uh, during World War II, they were when uh, when they were being invaded, uh, not the Middle East. No, maybe it was Middle East, Middle East, Asia, somewhere in that area was where kukri comes from. Um, but the the I'm sure you've seen these knives before if you've watched uh, um, Resident Evil. You see Alice in the first movie. She's got these big, huge, whopping knives. Now, just to show you, as you can see, that thing's larger than the axe. That axe is about a foot long. That knife right there is 15 and a half inches long. And the heft of these blades, when they were originally actually used for personal defense, they were being used against armed soldiers and these people this is all they had but because of the heft of the front part of this blade this part of the of the knife this part of the blade right here is what was that is actually referred to as like the kill zone because of the heft of this if you take this across the neck your head's coming off simple as that it'll take off limbs head and I have two of them absolutely love these things these are full tang as you can already see uh, this is a slip resistant handle uh, these are made by United Cutlery for the US Army Rangers Association they're actually folding knives that go with it too and then they're pretty cool I have two of those also I wanted a matching set Let's see if I can get one out here 
because this video is starting to get pretty long. This is the folding knife that goes with it. And you can already tell it's the same handle. So, yeah, these things are great. But, you know, knives, you know, I I wouldn't go too cheap, but I wouldn't spend $100 on one. You know, it might be a really good quality knife for 100 bucks, but, I mean, holy crap. You know, there's other things you could spend that money on other than big, huge, expensive knives. This knife was 15 bucks. This knife was 15 bucks. This knife was 15 bucks. It's full tang, like I said. And it is stainless UC1442. I don't know what that means. Um, but it is a good steel. I've used these knives for hacking down small trees. I've used them for... Uh, uh, hell, I even used it once to uh, spread butter on bread. Yeah, it's kind of overkill for that. But, you know, these things will... They, you know, if you ever have to drop out of a tree to kill something for dinner, you know, the, the heft of these blades alone make them perfect weapons um, and perfect hunting things. But I also have various other knives and things here. I don't want to go too much into them because, you know, the video length is already 30 minutes. Um, nunchucks, hey, why not? If you actually know how to use them. Uh, this is, a, you know, it's got a folding knife in here, and this is a full tang uh, Tonto blade, and it is pretty sharp. This knife actually holds an edge better than most of my other ones. Uh, it is Maxim. I don't know what that is. Never heard of them before. Um, but it's it's also full tang. See that that metal blade goes all the way through it. Uh, riveted together, blah blah blah. You know how knives are usually made. Uh, two divers' knives. Uh, this is this is Ozark Trail. This is a Walmart knife. I have another one of these in my car. Uh, I also have a folder uh, in my car. It's in my tool bag. Uh, I use it every day. I. This is a, this is an eight dollar knife. The folder is a six dollar knife, and it is probably the best eight bucks I have ever had. It is full tang. It is stainless steel. Uh, the, the believe it or not, for being Walmart, the edge or the the blade holds a really nice edge, and it also has a nice little thumb grip right there. This is a really sharp knife. I've slice through leather no problem with this stuff so this would actually work really well for hunting so uh, then I have another one of these another folding like I said I had two of those uh, three butterfly knives I know these aren't exactly legal but they're not exactly illegal this one right here is actually pretty neat that is called a crisp blade Uh, and this is actually an authentic butterfly knife. You know, it's got the bloodline in it. This thing here. It's made so that when you poke somebody with it, the blood is able to spray around it. Uh, but this is actually an authentic butterfly knife. It's not like Chinese knockoffs like those two right there. Um, if I get this stupid thing to close. Okay. And then this is just a case for one of my other Winchester knives. I have like, uh, I don't think I brought them in here with me. No, I have like four different sets of Winchester knives. They're the, the every year around Christmas they come out, they bring them out, so I grab a couple of them. This is a reverse butterfly knife. Instead of opening sideways like those do, this one opens this way. This thing is a cheap piece of crap. I bought in what I call a Chinese dollar store. Uh, blade is loose as crap, and its blade is only connected right there. This is, There's no full tang or anything. The only connection point for this blade is right here. So I don't use this for anything. It's just for show. I wouldn't... I mean, I'd use it to spread butter on bread if I had to, but that's just... 
just part of the knife collection. This, yes, it's a stiletto, but it is not the spring assisted one because, you know, they're illegal. Even though I have a spring assisted one right there. But this is just a folding knife. Yeah, there's the release for it. This is what is called a spear tip. So I would use this for stabbing, I guess. Um, and then, of course, this one. Yeah, that's the only spring assisted one I have. But again, it's made in China, it's cheap crap, the blade's kind of flimsy, and it doesn't even completely close right. It won't even close all the way. As you can see, the blade is still sticking out there a little bit. And I've never really used this for much because you know, I don't want to carry it in my pocket because if it opens, I could stab myself. As for, you know, the rest of these folding knives, you know, it takes a little to open them up. You know, they don't fling open like this one does, so I don't, I won't keep that one in the, in the pocket. Um, but I do use it sometimes. Um, well, alright, um, yeah, this, this video's gone on for 36 minutes, so I should probably end it now um, but yeah that's just a little bit of, of uh, my defense part uh, I know I was going to talked about getting into cleaning kits but I don't really want this thing to stretch out to 40 minutes it's going to take forever to upload so all right have a nice day if you like the video uh, like it subscribe uh, have a good day and I'll see you on the next video I will be discussing uh, well basically more clothing uh, I know I brushed on that a little bit on a previous video, but I have other, you know, more stuff that I'm adding to it. So, all right, have a nice day.